Joining me now is Mark Cuban, the co-founder of Cost Plus Drug Company. Mark, it's a pleasure to have you here today. Give us some background on the genesis of this idea. I did read that you started working on it after receiving a cold email pitch about yeah. three years ago. Is that right? Correct. Um, actually, it's going on for uh, Dr. Alex Osmiansky, um, who's a radiologist by trade, but just a really smart guy, has started a compounding pharmacy in Colorado with the hopes of reducing the cost for specialty drugs. Because often, even with generics, when there isn't a large demand for a drug, prices skyrocket because um, it's difficult to make and expensive to make. And so he wanted to limit it to um, a few drugs. And I was like, no, let's, let's apply this to all generics and eventually all brands. And let's do it in a manner that makes it easy for patients to trust. So let's make it radically transparent and affordable. And so we created costplusdrugs.com. And the underpinning of it is we will show you our costs. We'll tell you exactly what we pay. We mark it up 15% on all of our drugs. We charge a $3 pharmacy handling fee. And then there's the shipping fee of $5. That's it. And so if you go to costplusdrugs.com and look up the medication that you take, there's a really good chance we're going to save you a ton of money. Mark, I do have to ask, was the fact that there's been congressional inaction, did that factor in any way into the internal calculations you had to be able to launch this business? No, it didn't when we started, Katie, but it does now, certainly, because, you know, it's obvious what people are trying to get accomplished, right? Whether it's insulin or other drugs, um, and it's, it's no... You know, it, it's no mystery that the pricing for drugs right now is insane. And so we recognize that we can't expect government all of a sudden to come up with solutions to, with, to something they haven't been able to solve for decades. And so we feel that we can either working independently or working with the, the federal government come up with better solutions. Mark, do you feel like the fact that there has been this complete and total stalemate to be able to move forward on something as critically important for Americans as access to medicine. Do you think that's indicative in some way of the fact that the economy is actually trending towards being not so kind and not so gentle towards the people that are living here in the United States? You know, this is a problem that's been going on for, as I said, decades, and it really required someone outside the system to come up with a solution. As an entrepreneur, I try to find, you know, industries that are doing it the same way and are opaque and are ripe for disruption. And the reality is, by doing the, the radical transparency that we are at costplusdrugs.com and really simplifying it, it was just cost plus 15 percent. That's the ultimate solution, because it had to be done outside the system. The, the you know, the government really tries to work, has to work within its constituencies, right? And the pharmaceutical companies, the insurance companies, the pharmacies, they're part of their constituencies. And so they're going to have to get feedback from them. We don't have to do any of those things. We can just come up with a, the approach and create a business that can price drugs, you know, astronomically lower than what they're being priced at from other sources. Earlier this year, though, as you mentioned, the fact that there are people like constituents that perhaps are driving some of the calculus, 193 House Republicans voted against capping the price of insulin, for example. While that bill ultimately passed in the House, it still needs to attract at least 10 GOP votes in the Senate before it can be signed into law. What kind of message would you like to send to the Republicans who voted against that bill? None. Honestly, just give us time. You know, I can't make any promises on insulin. Um, we're working on it. It, you know, it may happen, it may not happen, but I think there is a free market solution. And I see part of the problem, Katie, is when the government sets caps for industries that are as big as the pharmaceutical industry and the payer industries, you may get them to lower their price on you know, using insulin as an example to $35 um, per month. But they're just going to charge you somewhere else and make it up somewhere else. So your prices are going up to compensate for that. They're not going to lower their profits. And so you're working when you try to work within the existing system, you're not going to get the results that you expect. What we're trying to do, and again, I don't know if we'll be able to do insulin, we'll try, is we're going to be transparent. And we actually benefit the manufacturers when they work with us because that transparency makes their jobs easier. And if, you know, right now they're demonized and we take away that demonization. And so like you've seen with the generic drugs that we've been working with, we're going to do the same thing with branded drugs as well. And we'll be starting that shortly. And so I think give us some time. Hopefully we can get insulin, but we'll certainly get into other branded drugs and we'll be able to push the cost down considerably.
Can you quickly explain to our viewers how pharmacy benefit managers or PBMs work and how sure. your company sidesteps them to become an effective disruptor in this industry? Sure. I don't know if it's quick and easy to explain pharmacy benefit <laughs> managers, but effectively they're middlemen that take a cut of everything. Sure. And so they get some money from the manufacturer. They say, if you want this insurance company to carry your drug, you're going to have to pay us in order to be on what's called their formulary. And the manufacturers then have to do that um, if they want to be carried. And so that's a problem. So manufacturers say we have no choice but to pay these rebates to the pharmacy benefit managers. That obviously increases the price to patients. We say, look, we're not going to work with um, pharmacy benefit managers. In fact, we'll create our own and we'll completely eliminate the middle middlemen and be able to sell it to you at our cost, whatever that is, plus 15 percent. Now, the better part of that is as our volumes go up and more people use costplusdrugs.com, our pricing goes down and we completely pass on that, that lower cost to our patients. And so you've seen us announce cost reductions every few weeks and we'll have another one um, in the middle of July. Mark, you mentioned a few minutes ago that you're an entrepreneur. Let's be frank. You're a shark. We know you wouldn't get into anything unless it made total business sense for you. You talk about yeah. the fact that it's a specific markup, that you actually don't actually spend any money on marketing. This is all word of mouth referral in terms right. of being able to promote what's going on with your company. Is this a profitable venture for you or are you OK to maybe take a loss on the margins to disrupt this broken system? I'm getting crushed right now. <laughs> this would not go well on Shark Tank. Um, no, I'm, I'm losing a lot of money right now, and that's okay. Look, I'm, I'm one of the luckiest guys in the world. My next dollar is not going to change my life. And so while it's cost me amount of money, a lot of money now, our goal truly is to, to make it up as we grow so that we can be profitable and we can reinvest in other drugs. If we get to enough scale, maybe you know we're already building a manufacturing plant in Dallas that will allow us to make injectable drugs so that, you know, there's a whole list of, of injectables that are difficult to source and are very expensive as a result. We'll be able to push those down considerably and sell them to hospitals who can then hopefully stick to our pricing mechanisms and reduce their pricing to their patients. And so having those profits allows us to reinvest. And look, I get the whole thing that, you know, it doesn't feel good when people make profits off, off of other people's illnesses. I get that. But the reality is, you know, there's always going to be new drugs. There's always going to be, you know, new medicine, new um, technologies, whatever it may be. And the only way we're going to be able to invest in those is by being at least marginally profitable. And we're, you know, a public benefit corporation. My goal is not to go out there and make as much money as I possibly can. We don't take investors for the simple reason that I don't want to have any obligation to paying dividends or other rewards to new investors. And so we really, you know, again, we're doing this for the right reasons. We are making a profit. I'm not ashamed that we're going to make a profit, but we're really going to invest that in a way that allows us to be more effective and more efficient than um, what the government probably can do. Well, on behalf of countless Americans, I am grateful. And I say thank you thank for you. having the vision to be able to launch this company. And your secret will be safe with me. Maybe I'll steal Mr. <laughs> Wonderful from Kevin O'Leary, our mutual friend, yeah. and I'll give you that moniker for what you're doing. Thank you, Mark Cuban, for being here today. Thanks for having me on, Katie. Thank you. Absolutely.